The Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, APWEN, was formed in 1982 by six outstanding female engineers. In no particular order are Engineer Joanna Ulutumbi Maduka, FNSE, Engineer Mayen Adetiba, FNSE, Engineer Inkechi Yere Isigwe, FNSE, Engineer Ulufumi La Kaduri, FNSE, Engineer Wankego Ojuko, FNSE, and Engineer Beatrice Odini, FNSE. Since its inception in 1982, the association has had of 15 past presidents, with the immediate being the inventive engineer Felicia Agubata, who introduced the Invented Beauty program. World Engineering Day for Sustainable Development is celebrated on the 4th of March of every year as a UNESCO International Day of Celebration of Engineers and Engineering and Nigeria Engineers are not taking the back seat in this celebration. The Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria is one of the few engineering groups taking this seriously and also making the engineering profession attractive to young girls. This can be seen in their nationwide STEM program, Inventive Building program, She Engineer program and many others, where they try to encourage the girl child to pick up engineering as a career. The results so far speak volume of the impact already made with this program. This is what these women have to say. Human capacity development, if it's a very wide range thing because there are different things that we do. Some people go in for um, what we call the normal education routes, primary, secondary, university, and then post uh, qualification training on the job training. For some people it's vocational training, and for some it's entrepreneurship and, and all those. But human capacity development is what improves you from where you are to be able to assist you to do your job better to be able to assist you to improve your personal prosperity. It also um, is a way of getting the whole system also up to date because again, like I mentioned earlier, there's the um, on the job training, the continuous professional development. All of these things are what make us able to do our job better and to able to deliver on our promises. So that's what human capacity development um, entails. In our government here, we have uh, taken a very, very proactive step in developing human capacity in Ogun State. Our education um, institutions are perhaps not where they should be, and His Excellency has declared a state of emergency on education to be able to focus a lot of energy on that. We are looking at the, the teachers, we are looking at the infrastructure in the schools and also the curricula of the students to make them appropriate for the 21st century. I mean, essentially what we have now is we have league tables in the schools where we measure the examination results at the end of um, SS3. And we have seen that over the last few years there have been uh, in some sectors, in some areas, deterioration in the results. In some, they, it goes up and down and we have to look at what has caused that. So this is one of the areas that we are looking at to monitor through league tables. We are also looking at it vis-a-vis -vis employability of uh, indigents here in Open State. We have a job portal where we've brought people on board to be able to uh, enumerate them and know how many people are looking for employment and from this we are able to see the skill gaps that we have where we have employers who say they require certain skills and uh, registered youth who are unemployed or underemployed may not necessarily have the skills that the employers are looking for so this is how you can now say these are the sectors we have to address to be able to bridge that gap. We, you know, we discovered that for the young girls, 
Natural hygiene management is very difficult for them in schools, resulting in some of them dropping out of school. So we are intensifying action in menstrual hygiene management to make sure that the girl child education is preserved. And the success we've made is that the economy will improve, but most importantly, fewer people will die. I mean, children, and even adults die from my diarrhea. So fewer people will die, which means the economy improves. And another thing we have to look at is to make sure, we have to make sure that we improve our data management. is quite active in this and um, we actually have a fund that deals with solar um, at the micro enterprise level so that's just one of the things um, we have done by way of intervention for micro enterprise for um, people at the bottom of the pyramid where they're able to access um, this source of power so that speaks specifically to infrastructure and innovation but um, specifically to um, Target 9.3, which talks about um, financial inclusion for small enterprise. Um, this is definitely an area that um, BOI has worked very, very um, deliberately on. Goal number seven talks about affordable and clean energy. I know that it has about five targets. One of them is increasing substantially the renewable energy mix. It also talks about uh, improving energy efficiency. It talks about access to clean and affordable energy. And uh, I think lastly, creating an enabling environment for international cooperation to be able to have improvement in renewable energy plans for global effect. Um, in Nigeria, a lot of effort has been put into place. Uh, we have a lot of policy frameworks that have been looked into approved by government. Uh, we have the National Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Policy. We also have other um, uh, approved policies like the NEC, that is the National Energy Regulatory Commission, approving the cost reflective tariff for those who want to go into the renewable energy system with new grids. Uh, the hunger index, to me, the way I interpret it is that uh, Nigeria can only provide food for 27.9% of, of its population. This is not good enough. Uh, it means that our agricultural production is below standard or inadequate to meet the demand of the populace. Therefore, means that we have to have another system. We have to have a paradigm shift to look at how to solve this inadequate or insecure food uh, for the country. Uh, in looking at it, I will, I will want us to have a paradigm shift and re-examine the three M's or the three factors of productivity, man, materials, and money. Man, we need to look at the issue of production. What do we use to produce food for us? It might interest you to know that uh, in 1960, the average farmer's age was like 50, 60, thereabouts. Not many people were farming even at that time. And the size of farm at that time was six point, about six to seven acres of land with poor implements to use. Uh, we need to move away from that now. We have to address that issue. Encourage more young ones to come and farm even if it is 6.76 to 7 acres of land with the use of good implements that can give us increased yield. Today, not many, all the younger ones have gone to the, to the cities to look for jobs. But then the farm is still there, degrading, low in fertility, productivity poor from that, and lack of farm hands to produce on the farm. Let's look at our, our machine. What are the machines needed for Nigeria? We need to address the issue of adequate and suitable machine or appropriate machine 
to meet the size of land that we have. Not many people have access to 50 acres of land. The average that any Nigerian farmer, serious Nigerian farmer, local serious Nigerian farmer can have is about 7 to 10 acres of land. So let's develop machines that will fit into that so that productivity of those who are farming will be high. And they will have a higher income and encourage, thereby we encourage them to farm more. We are building the capacity of our young engineers because they are the future leaders that we have. So we want to make sure that they are of high standard because if you are going to sponsor someone for a leadership position, we want to ensure that the person has the capacity to perform in that role and that she's not just there to fill up the quota. So we have the town and gown mentoring and capacity building program for our young engineers to help them develop skill sets that will make them effective future leaders. When we're talking about uh, one or two specific actions being taken to attain the goal, Lamata is in the business of expanding mass transportation. We are currently working on two additional BRT uh, lines that will be open, at least um, the Abu Lebba uh, BRT should be open come the end of second quarter, beginning of third quarter. Um, also, we are starting to implement or we're completing the implementation of the red and the blue line railway lines. Uh, the red line will go from Agbado to Oyibo and Oyibo will be connected to Oyibo bus terminal so that people will have complete and seamless transportation all the way from Agbado to Marina. All of these um, mass transportation initiatives, when they start to operate, they will cater for all facets of society with particular attention to women, school children and people, persons with disability. We expect that all of our stations will have elevators going up so that persons with disability will be able to access the platforms and the access onto the train is flush with the platform level so that persons with disability will not have any challenges getting onto our trains. Uh, the same thing goes for our buses. Our buses have access for persons with disability on them, especially the new ones that we're rolling out. So from Lagos' perspective, I mean, in terms of mass transportation, those are the first key things we're doing. Over the years, it has recognized that there are gaps in data collected, so we, uh, it's difficult to measure the exact progress scientifically. However, however, on the face of it, you can see that there's been progress. There are more women in migrant positions, in governance, in political positions, and in board, in board positions. Um, we need to encourage younger women to do, their, to, to do STEM, to do engineering, to do technical subjects so that they can be, so that we can have more female engineers in the profession. We need to encourage those who are already in practice not to leave even when they are married and going and raising children. We need to find ways to encourage them to stay in the profession. Engineering is a very, very fulfilling profession and the more women we have, the better. A woman's point of view, the, the way a woman will see, it, will see a problem is different from the way a man will see a problem. Therefore, if you have women in engineering, in management positions, in governance, in politics, the way they address problems, their points of view, will have an impact on, on women's lives and will make the world a better place. As these women join the rest of the world in celebrating engineers and engineering, to them, it is not just celebration. It's indeed a wake-up call for more action.